Hi crafters, Raquel here with Paints and Glitter. I'm coming along one more time just to share with you yet another tutorial on how I have created a shabby chic version of the Jingle Bells and Baubles. I've only made the bell in this instance, whereas in a previous video I share with you how to make two different types of baubles using this kit both the bell and the traditional shape. So I just wanted to come back and share this version. In this video, you're going to see the assembly and then just a few of the little items here, like the little swirls and then the glitter that I use on here, which happens to be the glimmer paste from the kit. So just to give you a different option and what I wanted to show is of course that this will become a lantern because it has acetate on the inside rather than paper so all of this is see-through and once i place a little tea light in there then i can hang this on the tree and it will be lit up and the other difference from the other one of course is the bottom here so other people have already done this i believe it was christine who did that in one of her videos so um, it's super easy. What I used was one of the hexagons from the Hexagon mini album collection from Tonic Studio. So I'll be linking that below if it's still available. You may want to pick it up. But if not, then you can definitely just place the bobble on top of a piece of cardstock once it's all assembled. Trace around it, cut your piece of cardstock, and you'll have your size. So that's definitely up to you. You can also um, decorate the inside if you want to. If you want to put a second color on the base, that's probably a really good idea because then you could put reflective paper on the bottom and then that might give you a little bit of a different result or you can do half of it so that it has reflective paper on the inside and then the other half with the openings. But I just wanted to share with you, of course, that to make this bobble using this kit, what I used was this piece here, and I'll be sharing that of course in the tutorial. And then what I did was that I took the panel that looks like this, and once I cut all of my pieces, and I did the same for the bottom, I then went back with those pieces already cut out and only used this on top. And what that does is because this doesn't cut the edge, it'll cut right into that background. And then what's really fun about it is if you see here up close, you can take your Nouveau drops and kind of fill in little spaces if you want to. That's what I did throughout just to add a little bit of glimmer here and there. Also some texture because depending on the drop that you use, you're going to be able to have either a very pigmented effect or translucent or glitter, whatever you like. But to finish this off, aside from the Glitterati Glimmer Paste that I mentioned, I also did use white gesso, and then I used, just from my stash, some glass glitter. I made the flowers using Tonic Studios dyes, so I just wanted to mention that. And I used some shabby paper that I had in my stash. I also used some silver glitter card from Tonic Studios that you can pick up to make the leaves and then added some other little roses and flowers throughout. All of this is topped off with uh, glitter and then I added some little bells and hearts here to the seam binding that I added on the top so that way the recipient can hang this on the tree of course and then there's some other little leftover pieces of uh, ribbon or lace I should say and that's about it so I think oh the other dies here are just from previously released dies from Tonic Studios the little candy canes was from the festive home die set that was so absolutely adorable and this one here is from the magazine that Tonic Studios released with the snowflake that's still available so I'll link that below as well if you're interested in look into looking uh, at what that looks like. <laughs> but yeah, this was super fun. I loved working with this kit. It's my favorite of the entire year. 
I just think they really knocked it out of the park with this one. And I think that you would absolutely love working with it if you're a crafter or even if you're new to 3D crafting, you should just give it a go. You might really find that you enjoy this type of crafting. And don't forget that you can definitely use the stamps in this set as well as the dies to create cards for Christmas. It's not too late for that. And this is still available in the US, which is why I wanted to come back and let you know so that if you want to pick it up, feel free to do so. And at the end of the video, I'll insert pictures so that you get to see what this looks like a little bit better, as well as the other ones that I had created in case you want to see a more Christmassy version, okay? So thank you so much for watching. To begin the assembly of this beautiful doll, what I am going to show you here is that you're going to need six die cut pieces that look like this. This is the one in your kit that is a triangular shape but does have a square tip on the narrow end. That's what you see there. So you're going to fold all of those little tabs away from you as well as the rectangular edge. And the one tip that I can give you is that with the Tonic Studios dies, whenever you see a tab that's a circular form or shape, that means that you're going to need to add a curve to your paper, okay? Now what I did with my little shapes here is that I used the Verso die that was included in the kit and you can choose the one you like. I cut into that background rose colored cardstock and then I also adhered acetate to the background. Now, if you're wondering which type of acetate I used, it was the one in the packaging. So I like to save the, the clear packaging that you get with every single one of your kits and cut those down to create little windows. Now, this small hexagon, you're also going to cut out using that small die in your kit. That's where you're going to adhere every single one of those small tabs. Now you're going to want to make sure that this meets the edge. That's how you're going to have room for all six of these pieces. And that's why I flipped mine over purposely. So that way I can make sure that those edges are meeting up with one another, if you see there. And then I'm just holding this. And what I figured out is with Craft Perfect cardstock or 80 pound cardstock, which is what I recommend for this particular project, is that once you hold it together, of course, it starts creating a bond. And I pretty much hold every piece onto uh, the other or the next for about, um, I would say, five to 10 seconds. Now here you see this coming together quite easily and what you want to be mindful of of course are just the angles because this is a 3D project. The more accurate your angles are when you're adhering the papers together the cleaner the, the end results will be. So that's another tip that I can give you there. I just take my time. I like to listen to podcasts and the like as I am crafting and it just makes the time go by very quickly. So here's the last one. And another tip I'm going to give you is that on the inside here, or the, the opposite side of what you're seeing right here, you can place your second little hexagon. I'm going to be doing it uh, a little later, but you may want to do it now. And here, where you see that curve, you just saw me place the adhesive on the paper. You just want to take your time and make sure that those little corners meet. And I do recommend you start toward the top and then just work your way toward the bottom. You're going to make sure that you hold that paper together before you move on to the next tab. So it's going to help you create that nice curvature in your paper. And you may be wondering if the acetate makes it a little bit more difficult. This happens to be thin acetate. It's not construction grade, if you will. So it's actually not bad at all. You can also use vellum. You can use the glitter cardstock that's available in your kit. 
You can use whichever type of paper you like, but here's what I wanted to point out. You want to make sure you follow that curve as well as you can, and this is going to give you a really beautiful finish. So if you need a little bit more adhesive, as you see me doing there, of course you can go back, add a tiny bit more. But my recommendation, of course, is that you take your time. Try not to rush through this. I, again, hold my paper together, and I pretty much, I, I was counting just to see how long it would take for each one of these panels to come together. And what I noticed is that it took me about 30 seconds to get from the top of that curve all the way to the bottom. And I did that on purpose. I wanted to give you guys kind of an accurate time frame of how long it takes to put one of these together. And here's the finish piece, of course. I just went all the way around repeating the same steps. And then these rectangular pieces at the bottom, you're going to want to fold, but you want to make sure that you place the adhesive facing in, not on the outside. And there's good reason for this because you're going to be using two hexagons to make this a really nice and sturdy top. Now, if you want to, you can repeat this and make both of the pieces the same shape and that's just going to give you a nice round bobble. I did share that already in a previous video, but here's where you're going to place the hexagon. It's going to go right inside, and this is why you wanted to place your adhesive on the inside of those tabs, and then you can make sure that your shape is really nice and precise by joining those little corners all the way to the edge, and this is where you can kind of pull the paper toward that hexagon and it's going to give you a nice finish edge there. Now here's where you see me placing a magnet. If you're going to go with magnets, I highly recommend that you use a strong adhesive to hold those onto your paper. I've used Redline Adhesive from Craft Perfect. You can grab that at this moment. It's actually on sale, so you may want to stock up on it. And then here is the little hinge. I'm placing that with the folded edge all the way to the edge of the bobble there. So I'm actually pushing that paper out, making sure that it meets that edge. And here I'm just removing the red line uh, adhesive cover there, if you will. And I'm going to hide that magnet. And to do so, I'm going to use another hexagon. This is also going to hide the hinge, but it's still going to allow it to work, of course. So I'm just being a little bit more generous here with my adhesive. I'm going to go all the way through those nooks and crannies, as I call them in the paper, and then meeting up my second hexagon, which you can, if you would like to, cut out in a different color. You can use your pretty papers, whatever you like. I'm making this um, bauble all in one color and then adding to it with my um, decorative portions, if you will. However, I've seen other ones where the ladies have created them with several different colors, and they look really, really pretty. So be sure that, that you watch other videos from the design team, and you're going to get a kick out of all the different versions out there that have already been created with these. They are so pretty and I love the variety. Now using this piece here, you're going to notice that it has some rectangular little edges there. This is going to help create the portion of the lid that will allow you to hang this on a Christmas tree or wherever you choose to decorate. So you're going to burnish all of the folds and all of the little triangles are going to meet up with the squares right next to them. And that's how you're going to adhere this all the way around. It's all, almost going to look like a little bottle cap. So this piece, by the way, you'll be cutting with the die that comes in your kit two times to be able to create the portion that you'll need for the top. And you're going to also notice that it does have a slit that cuts out of the center 
So in a moment, you'll see how that's used. But you want to make sure you hear this all the way around. It comes together quite easily. And that's the result. So set that one aside. You're going to repeat it. So that's what it initially looks like. But for the second one, you're going to take the little oval that you can cut out using the dies in your kit, cut it out twice. I chose to go with a metallic cardstock and I just joined together the top portion. And here you'll see how that other one was folded before I adhered it together. So all those little triangles get folded away from you and then the little edges of the square portion as well. Again, going all the way around and now that little oval gets fed through from the bottom. You pull it through and then the wider portion of that oval gets adhered right onto that coral paper. Just make sure you pull it apart so that it lays flat. And I did use my table to be sure to push onto that paper and get it nicely adhered. Now I'm going to repeat the same process, taking all of those little triangle portions on the edge. And this is going to help me, of course, create this 3D portion that's going to create the, the little hanging part of the, the bobble. So take your time. Just make sure that you apply enough adhesive so that this paper doesn't pull apart. And that's where you see me there holding that paper together and making sure that it is nice and dry before I move on to the next. Now, Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive is a great adhesive for this type of project. It has enough flexibility to allow you to kind of move the paper for a couple seconds before it sets. However, once it's adhered, it's it's adhered, <laughs> it's permanent, and it's great because it creates a, a wonderful bond with the paper. And I know that that might seem kind of um, common sense for some people, but not all glues are created equal. I guarantee you, I've tried almost every single one out there, and this is by far my favorite. I highly recommend it. So if you're new to Tonic Studios, or just happen to have a different type of adhesive on hand and you're finding that your 3D projects don't come together the way that you would like them to, just give it a try. Um, I don't think you'll regret it in any way. But here is where you see that little portion coming together right on the top. So the little hexagon shape matches perfectly. You can set that aside to dry and move on to the bell portion of this 3D project. Again, all of the little tabs will fold away from you with the exception of the bottom edge. That bottom edge you want to fold as a valley fold. Now you see me doing the same thing again because I have those circular tabs. I know that I need to create a curve in my paper and I'm going to grab yet another large hexagon and I'm going to have that bell portion adhere onto that hexagon with the pretty portion facing out. In other words, the part that has the acetate adhered onto it is gonna face the inside of that hexagon. Now I've folded this to make sure that the edges meet and you can definitely burnish that with a bone folder. And then of course I'm making sure that all those little tabs are folded before I adhere all of this together. That's going to be really important on this piece to make sure that the shape is exactly the way that you want it. And I'm going to repeat the steps going one by one all, all around the edge, putting one piece next to the, the other and making sure that my angles are nice and precise. So that's uh, another recommendation is just take your time and uh, the bone folders are great because you can apply some pressure without putting any kind of folds in your paper and that's why we crafters love to use that 
Now here's another thing I wanted to point out is to make sure that all edges are adhered. So where you see that corner there on that hexagon, you just want to make sure that the tabs are fully adhered before you move on to the next one. So of course I'm going to do this six times, going all the way around. And on this portion, I did the same thing as I had done on the top, which was that I cut into it with a verso die and then put the acetate on the back. But here's where I recommend that if you do use acetate, that you put adhesive on your paper and really hold on to that. Here's where you're going to notice how this curves out. And I was a, a little bit generous with the adhesive here because I wanted to make sure that my paper was making contact and adhering together nicely due, due to the fact that there is a piece of acetate there. So I didn't actually have a whole lot of room to place the adhesive, but I wanted to make sure that that glued together really nicely before I went on to the next edge. So I highly recommend that you just go one tab at a time don't rush through this if you want a really nice elegant finish and then if you want to you can adhere the little triangular tabs at the bottom i just want to recommend that you do so when your paper is nice and flat and here's why for this one i decided to add a bottom to this bell so this is different from the first video that i created if you want to see that other one then you'll notice that i didn't finish it off this way and the part where I adhered the little edges of the bell was omitted from this video but I just wanted you to know that I did adhere them so that the angle was nice and flat and you can tell because once I add this larger hexagon then I'm able to finish off the bottom of this bell and I just wanted to create a different version of it. I wanted to make it into a little box so that I can add a little tea light inside. And that's why I bothered using the acetate. So here I'm meeting up all of those edges. Again, making sure that all of those angles are nice and um, accurate. And then once I'm happy with that, I burnished it all the way around. I use my rubber eraser to take away any adhesive I didn't want to see. That's another tool that I highly recommend. And now I can put the little lid on my bauble here. So I've placed the magnet to match the first one. And now I'm placing adhesive on the hinge. This hinge is going to go right on top of that bottom portion. You can close it press it down and now you see where I had placed glue on the magnet it just adhered right onto the bottom so it's kind of like a little cheater method to place your magnets but of course this is going to all be hidden and have a nice clean finish because this is where you can add your final hexagon so it does come together quite easily it's just a type of project that you don't want to rush through if you want to have a nice finish here is the finished bell and then you're going to see a little bit of how I chose to decorate this I uh, don't have the video portion of how I made the flowers that are going to go on this bell but you'll see uh, other portions what I can recommend of course is that you give yourself time for all of your pieces to dry I always recommend at least 24 hours for all of the adhesive to dry before you give away any project. But here is the fun part. I used some of the glitter, glitterati is the color, I'm sorry, um, the gel from Tonic Studios. And of course, you're going to get one of these in your kit. If you already have it, then I'm sure you've probably um, opened it up. If you haven't, don't be shy. It's a lot of fun. It's what I call contained glitter because as you see here i'm using a an old paintbrush this is one that i go back to over and over again because it's just 
really easy to kind of scoop out that glitter from any one of those little jars. They do come in different colors, by the way. So if gold is not your color, then you can definitely use other colors from Tonic Studios. And I just decided to have a little play. I don't take it too seriously. I just add, like to add a little shine to my projects. And I really do think it adds quite a bit of beautiful texture and of course the shine. But here's one of the little swirls also from the kit. And what I did with mine was that I cut it out of different colors. One of them was uh, the ballet pink from Tonic Studios. Another was in silver and yet another in the pink glitter cardstock from Tonic Studios. The way that you add these on to your bell is really up to you. You don't have to adhere them fully. I did do so in this case, but if you see my other video, then you'll notice that on some of them, I didn't even adhere the full little swirl. But here I decided to supplement this project with some candy canes that I cut out in silver and in pink using another set of dies from Tonic Studios. So that is another recommendation is that you can take a look at what you already have. I love mixing and matching my projects. So anything that you may have already purchased from Tonic Studios or any other companies that you love to shop from, then of course you can go ahead and add those to your heart's content. It is so much fun, especially if you're inspired by the little intricate panels that you already see there. For instance, this one had the little stars. And what I did was that I grabbed some uh, snowflakes from another set of dies. And it also had the word joy. And this was from a magazine that's still available. In fact, at, at least on the Tonic Studios US website. So I'll link it below if you want to take a look at that. It has some gorgeous dies. And so I used the little snowflakes from that other set. And supplemented this little project. I also used the holly and berries. And at the end of this video, what you're going to see is how I decorate it fully. But I thank you so much for having been here. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and that you can be inspired and be blessed. Thank you so much. <laughs>